Hi, I'm Pete Rivard. I'm a principal instructor in the Graphics and Printing Technologies program here at Dunwoody. I teach uh, pre-press and graphic design, and today's topic is structural design for packaging. Um, there's all kinds of types of packages. We are concerned with the folding cart, and specifically, today's topic is about corrugated materials, what most people think about as cardboard, um, which we call corrugated. And we're going to walk you through the process that you'll be going through when you connect up with your client. Your client gives you a product and you start the design process. Now, um, most people think about design as graphic design. They think about color, they think about logos, they think about photographs, they think about typography, things like that. In the packaging world, there are two design stages and before we ever get to the graphic design, we go through a structural design stage. That's our topic today, structural design for packaging. So the topic that we're on today, the subject matter has nothing to do with color. It has nothing to do with typography. It has everything to do with structural considerations like what is my product? How much does it weigh? What kind of folding carton can I make to contain um, this product to hold it, to protect it from the consumer, protect the consumer from the product. Now, uh, we'll be talking to uh, Nate Eulen later on, who's a second year student today. This is a real design of his own. His client happens to be the president of Dunwoody College of Technology, Richard Wagner, and the product is a one-off. It's an ornamental medallion. The medallion weighs somewhere around two pounds, and the client wanted Nate to design a carton that would uh, both protect this ornamental medallion and also display it in his office when he had visitors. So a little bit about the process. We don't start by jumping on a computer and going right into the design stage. The process starts like most business starts. It starts with a contract. And this contract is the result of a conversation, a conversation between you and your client, and you talk about the product itself. What is it? If it was being marketed, who would be the intended uh, customer? Who would be the, the demographic? Um, where would this product be found? Who would be selling it? How much would it cost? Uh, how would it sit on a shelf? those types of things and you gather all that information before the design stage even starts and you put it into contract form so that the client can review it can say yeah that's what we talked about and sign off on it and then this contract serves as your database your initial database on what you need to do to fulfill what the client wishes you to do now after the contract begins um, then uh, there's some rough primary stages. For instance, what Nate had to do was just sit down, again, nowhere near a computer, with a pencil and some paper and start roughing out some ideas, roughing out some rough sketches. Now again, we are concerned uh, with the topic of the folding carton, and there are categories of folding cartons. There are four categories, as a matter of fact. There's tubes, there's trays, there's specialty, and there's um, multi. And in this particular situation, Nate showed the uh, ornamental medallion in a couple different possibilities with tubes uh, and with trays, and uh, eventually his uh, client settled on the whole idea of a tray. And that's what we're looking at right here. This happens to be a fairly classic tray category. In fact, it's a tray within a tray, so to speak, because he has the outside carton itself and he also has an insert uh, that angles the medallion up for better display. Now again, you can see that this is pretty much uh, just bare bones corrugated. It's brown. It doesn't have any coating on it. It doesn't have any ink. That's not the, that's not the point of, of this stage of the design. Structural design is all about does the product stay where it belongs inside the carton, inside of the interior tray, can you open and shut it, 
without there being bulges are all the pieces or all the components, the correct size, the correct dimensions, so that this carton will continue to open and shut and serve the purpose. Now, um, the rough stage is get the designer and the client to a certain point where the client says, yeah, I like the shape of that, I like the basic concept. Um, once this is accepted and signed off, and again, you'll see that there's a client signature right there indicating that. So once we've got our sign off on our rough sketch, now we have to formalize it. And uh, this is where the designer goes into the computer into a specific software application, in our case, Ardeos CAD. This is the software that is used out in the packaging industry for designing die lines. And a die line is a, an engineering framework for a package, whether it's a folding carton or a can or something else. Essentially, what we're doing is we're creating a two-dimensional plan that later will be rendered into a three-dimensional object. Uh, our two-dimensional plan is going to be very similar to what we see right here. In the folding carton world, in the structural design world, a, uh, a carton is divided into individual components. And every single component has a name. Um, flaps, panels, uh, enclosures, locking systems. There's nothing about a folding carton or a package that hasn't been named and identified and uh, um, defined. So if you look at this particular die line right here, the instructions are the lines themselves. You see we have solid black lines. That indicates a cut. Any time that we see a solid black line, we know that a knife is going to go all the way through the material and cut all the way through. If we see a, folded, a dotted red line, that indicates a fold or a score. That's not a cut. What that uh, is is a... Uh, an instruction for a wheel to actually crush the material so that we can get a 90 degree right angle fold. So if we're creating a hinge, for instance, uh, this right here would normally be a score. Um, here's even a better example of a score because uh, it, it doesn't have any slits in it right here. Uh, depending on our material and uh, the angle and things like that, sometimes a simple score won't do. We have to weaken the material by having a knife go through it from time to time uh, so that we can get a 90 degree fold. And that's actually called a half slit, half score. Um, so these are some of the engineering elements that are required to make sure that this box, this carton, opens and closes and uh, and folds and glues so that the two-dimensional die line here uh, becomes a three-dimensional object when this die line is applied to a material, to a substrate. Now in our case today, our substrate is what most of us think of as cardboard. Uh, out there in the packaging world, it's known as corrugated and it's a sandwich material. We have uh, what's called liner board or smooth paper on the outsides and the inside of the sandwich is, uh, is a material called fluting which is a uh, which gives it the corrugated aspect. It's a, it's a wavy uh, heavy wood grain material that actually supplies the, the rigidity and stiffness that the, that the uh, folding carton is going to need to be able to stand up straight and to have other cartons piled on top of it and to go on pallets and ship and all that other good stuff. So the designer has to be aware of um, the material that they're using, the strength of that material, and even things like the direction of the fluting so that uh, when the carton is on the shelf it doesn't collapse in on itself and that it, it has uh, the proper load bearing strength. In a, in a sense, this part of the design process is almost as, as architectural as it is graphic in terms of its um, of its role.